Hey nerds, Todd Simmons coming at you with a little more Toddomation. Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, hiding more of your, uh, say, variables that, that you don't want to expose uh, inside your code. So, you know, we all know that, that statically configuring username, password, stuff like that uh, is great if it's just you that's using uh, the file or the code. But if you're team or teammates or organization or you're putting it out you know on on git and allowing individuals to use your code then you don't always want to have that stuff hard coded or, or statically coded uh, inside your actual code um, in the last video that i did and this may look familiar with the environment we we took that information and we put you know our api keys or our org names or our username or our password and we put that all in the windows environment and it was specifically related towards meraki so uh, i'm going to expand on that video and show you something a little bit different today that it doesn't matter what system you're on right you could be on mac you could be on linux you could be on windows and instead of trying to hide that information inside the environment associated with Windows, I'm going to show you how to hire or how to hide it within the environment that you set up within Python. So you'll see over here on the left, we just have a couple of files. Uh, very, very simple stuff, but we're going to use these files to hide that information. Now, we can also do this with information that you don't want to hide. So say there's specific variables that have to be set for your code to run. Uh, we can use environment or the .env file to also hold those particular variables so you can call them as needed, which is great because now people that's working with your code don't actually have to go in and change uh, your Python code. There's just a file specifically for them to put their specific information in uh, and then you call from that particular file. That might be a, a website address or uh, let's say you're working on a, a dashboard with products and it has a certain number of products like we saw uh, in the Meraki dashboard uh, before. So the way that we do this is we create an environment file. So the first thing I'm going to show you is my example environment. So if you're releasing your code to other individuals, you certainly want to create an example because you don't want to transfer your environment. You, you know, uh, you want to let them know they've got to create their own .env file. Uh, but this is what it should be, uh, right? Just, you know, put a quick note. Um, there's no quotes in a .env file. There's no um, lists or anything like that. Now we can process items as lists uh, or Boolean, uh, which is a great way to do things that you can't do in the Windows environment here. Uh, but as you can see, I have uh, particular things in my environment. So I'm going to assign an API key, an org name, an org ID, a network name, network ID, email, web, product types. As you can see, these are comma separated because uh, that's going to end up being a list uh, and then a time zone. So this is just my example uh, that I recommend that you provide to individuals. Here's my actual environment file now. So as you can see, I have a real API key in here. My org name is Totomation. My org ID is 899384. Uh, my, my network name, notice there's no quotes around any of this. Okay, uh, which is really important when you create your environment file. So what we're going to use is something called uh, the Python decouple package. And it's a package that automatically reads from this .env file. You don't really have to do anything. It's already written. It's going to look for the .env file in the root directory of whatever folder or folder structure that you have uh, by default. And, and here's the great thing. If you start using the .env files, uh, you can also create something called a git ignore if you're on git. Um, in every git ignore, if you're automatically creating the git ignores, uh, they automatically add the .env, but you'll want to double check it to that git ignore, which means if you have your information on git when someone does a pull or a push or a branch or something, it does not copy this file. That's your file. So it's really, really nice whether you're just doing something on your workstation or whether you're working in Git. Uh, so let's look at the file real quick. I've created something called connection.py. Just a basic name, doesn't really mean anything. Notice I've got the from decouple import config and then I did the CSV. The CSV is important 
Um, it's a little misleading. You would think, oh, it's a CSV file. Well, not really. It, it, that's actually, we can make it a CSV file, but that's how we're gonna uh, get something into a list format. Uh, and then for my troubleshooting uh, and printing, I've switched over to ice cream. I think it's absolutely wonderful. If you have not used ice cream before, uh, hopefully you like what you see. It certainly is a better debug option than print. Um, it's kind of like pretty, pretty print, uh, but it, it, it's a little better in my opinion. Uh, so this is what we've got. From the decouple import config, we use the config method uh, to go pull those variables we want. So we create a variable in this file called API key. Uh, I like for these to match just because when I look at my environment here, I know what I'm calling. So I make these match. So as you can see, all I did was say config and then API key inside the method call, inside the open and close parentheses. The decouple knows exactly where it's going to go look. It's going to look for the .env file. Now, you can also do a .ini. Um, I typically don't use INI just because they're a little bit more complicated. You have to have the brackets, um, but, but they can be done in an INI file just as easy. Uh, same thing, the org name is going to go pull the org name. These are all the same variables, as you see here, that we have listed over in our env file. Now, notice that I have a products type and a time zone, and I want to call special attention to those. Here's the great thing about decouple is you can set a default value or you can tell it how you want to bring the information in. So as I get down here to product types, so I'm saying the product types is going to equal these product types that's going to be found in that .env file, okay? If there's not one there, I can assign it a default value. So I'm saying, look, if there's not a product type over there, we're just going to call it appliance. So if you've seen some of Meraki videos, right, you have to send... Uh, the product types as a list into Meraki when you're creating a network. Um, so this is pretty cool that you can do that. Uh, then I use the cast option. The cast option uh, allows us to use different data structures. You cannot do this in say Windows or Linux or Mac when you're looking at the environment variables. And at the cast, I'm gonna use the CSV method. And what that actually does is it's gonna take whatever it gets from, the, from this environment variable here and it's going to turn that into a list. That's why I have commas. If there wasn't commas, it would just be uh, one entry in a list. This is going to give me three entries in the list. Okay. And then the time zone, uh, once again, it's the, the, you know, these are no different the way that it pulls them, but this is going to have a default of America and New York. The default is only going to apply if that particular variable is not identified in the environment file. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to use IC, which is just short for ice cream. Uh, and I know it just looks like a really long print statement, which it is. It, it does a little bit different. And that's it. That's all you have to do to hide all of those variables. So I didn't put any of the variables in here. I'm going to call them and watch. So as soon as I hit play, there it goes. As you can see, ice cream called. And it's really nice. It uses a pipe. It tells you the variable name and then the value of that particular variable. That's why I've, I've switched over to ice cream uh, instead of just using print or pprint at this particular point. So it gives you all the variable names and then the variable that it pulled, which if we look at the environment file, we'll see that's exactly what this is. Uh, one last thing, nerds, that I want to show you is this default. Okay, so because I have default set, I don't have to have that in the environment file. So if I go back to my environment file, okay, and I comment out these two lines, I come back over to my connection file and I run my Python again. As you can see, look, it totally changed those two and it used my defaults, which is a great way to do things. So now we're calling um, API keys and org names and different things that we might want to send uh, using an API call or we're logging into a machine, a um, bunch of different applications for this, but it's not hard coded into our Python code anymore. It's actually calling it uh, from somewhere else. So that's it. Quick, easy. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have questions or if you want to see a different video, uh, let me know. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. I promise you it really does help. Uh, and I really appreciate the support. So we'll talk to you all later, nerds. Bye.